Welcome, thanks again for the Premier team for having me. This is like nearly 10 years of doing this. It's insane, so great, good. Okay, we're gonna talk about augmented reality. I have a clicker. Um, so, what is augmented reality? Let's find out. Everybody close your eyes, and I can see you, so I'll know if you're not. Okay, what I want you to think about is what we are at half past two in the afternoon on a Saturday. I want you to think back to when you were 10 years old. What were you doing at half past two on a Saturday afternoon when you were 10 years old? You might have different people around you. There might be people talking to you physically in a room. You might be watching something on a screen or on a piece of paper um, or some other kind of activity. You might be playing somewhere indoors, outdoors, doing something with a tool or a toy or something like that when you were 10 years old. Okay, open your eyes. How many of you had a phone in your hand at the time? Very few of us. How many 10-year-olds do you think have got a phone in their hand at this point in time on a 2.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday afternoon? Very, very many more is the answer, and uh, because that's statistically evident, as you can see. Um, and the reason that that is so important is because when I'm going to talk now about augmented reality is to remember that basically the mobile phone is augmenting all of our realities all of the time, and it's not just the phone, it's everything else that's in our hands and homes. Augmented reality, however, or AR, as most people kind of refer to it, and I'm going to do that now for the rest of this talk, because otherwise I have to say the word augmented too many times, it just makes it feel a bit odd, is um, that most of us think of AR as doing, looking something like this something kind of silly. I'm creating a vortex out of my hands that's drifting and becoming this sparkling. I mean, the best way I could describe it is that everything is definitely around me. There you go, everything's definitely around him. Does that look obvious? Yeah, I thought so. And the problem with AR demos is that they often look like this. Um, could I just borrow the two of you ladies and uh, Sheridan, just come and help me with this situation? Have you all got your phones in your pockets? Okay, can you all pull, or, or pull a phone or grab an iPad or something like that? Here is how most augmented reality's demos look. Please come on stage. Please point a phone at the floor. Okay, this is how most people demonstrate augmented reality for you. Yeah, that's fine. Just stand there, point a phone at the floor. Does this look silly? Good. We've won in the opportunity to make these people look silly. Excellent, thank you very much, uh, yeah, good. So, um, so that's how most AR demos look, and it's, it's quite difficult because most of it is in our phones, it's on our faces in the case of this guy, and it's around us. Um, but there's so much more that we can be doing with the idea of AR. The idea of augmenting what we have around us through technology is nothing new. We've been doing it since the dawn of time. Have you, has anyone got a clock on the wall at home? Excellent, augmented reality. You can literally see time in front of you in the kitchen. It's amazing. But there are other things that we've been doing with it. So um, most of you will have experienced AR doing something stupid like this. How many of you have experienced something stupid like this? Excellent, good. Um, if I say the words baby shark, do, 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 who knows what I'm talking about? Excellent. People with children, I'm sorry. These things exist, unfortunately, where we put face filters on our faces and we experience what we call augmented reality, where we change the look of something, we change the look of ourselves in some cases. But there's so many more opportunities for us to engage with this technology than this. This is something that a few of my colleagues, this is my colleague Martin from Lego, talking about something that we announced earlier this year called AR Kit, uh, for AR Kit 2, which is Apple's version of augmented reality where you can bring models like the, this uh, Lego model, this is the Assembly Square Town, uh, to life using your iPad. So you're pointing the iPad at the Lego model that's physically there, and then seeing all of this amazing stuff come to it. Oh, look, here's some more people looking silly on a stage, pointing devices at a table. Um, you know, this is what we can do. We can bring these things to life, the physical coming into reality. Um, and that's obviously not just in physical products, but think about how we might navigate around our spaces. How many of you have ever kind of been stood in a, a shop or something and wondering, like, where's the toilet roll? It's somewhere hidden in the back right-hand corner because all of us buy toilet roll. It's a universal product. And so, you know, you're wanting to kind of get around. Or you arrive at church and you're wondering, oh, hang on a minute, where's the kids' work this morning? Well, technology like this might help you kind of get there. Here's this gentleman looking uh, very happy with his afternoon and going and scanning a, a code. He's seeing where he's got to head for his latest disappointment, and now he's using his phone to navigate around the corridors, bumping into things logically, probably dropping his coffee on the way, but following these little arrows that will teach him where he needs to go to get to his next meeting room. And when he gets there, because he doesn't want this kind of impersonal greeting where he doesn't know what's going on, he doesn't know what the Wi-Fi password, no one ever knows what the Wi-Fi password 
is. He's going to be able to get into the door. He's got the Wi-Fi password. Oh, and he's also got an introduction from the person that manages this room right there on his phone to tell him you know, kind of how to use it. This is the type of thing that could change our interaction with our physical spaces in the future, whether that's your churches, whether that's conferences like this. We could be experiencing them in entirely different ways. Now, for doing something that is completely ill-advised in any conference setting, we are going to attempt a live demonstration of augmented reality. And I will now throw to the back where my assistant uh, hiding back there has got my phone, which was a very dangerous thing to do. You can tell it's my phone that's actually happening now. This is really live. <laughs> We should just celebrate this moment. OK, so what I did was I made a poster for my church that I wanted to demonstrate on the walls. This is using an app called Canva. Many of you might have used it, particularly if you've taken one of Amaris's lovely digital trainings from the Church of England uh, on how to make you know, kind of posters for your church. And they're using the app. We can literally just scan around the room, and it's detected this flat plane using the depth sensors in the camera and, and some artificial intelligence to work out where that wall is. And you can see we've just positioned this poster that we've made and slapped it up on the wall there. So I now know what size I might want my poster. Is this graphic going to work well in my church? Maybe you want to swing it around and throw it up on the front of the screen of us up here. Look, there it is. And I want to work out what it looks like on the wall at the back. There you go. Now I know what it looks like on the wall at the back, and it's hiding me, which is probably a good idea. So uh, thank you. Live demo over. We've demonstrated augmented reality. Um, I know. I know. It's all right. I'll take the applause. So the thing is that with AR, most of the conversation is in the visual. And what I want to explain also is that AR is not just a visual thing, but anywhere where we can change our experience of the surroundings around us through technology is some version of augmented reality. Uh, the guys at Bose, who make nice headphones and speakers, uh, released a product earlier this year called Bose AR, and they operate in the sound space. And this is a demonstration of their Bose AR augmented reality uh, sunglasses that are using sound. Now, these are um, bone conducting microphones and uh, speakers that sit in the kind of temple region of your uh, headband here on these glasses. And when you're putting them onto your face, you've got little microphones there that are uh, picking up sound around you so you can give it voice commands and cues. And on the back, these are um, bone conducting speakers that sit on the jawbone and then basically pipe the music or whatever it is that you're listening to directly into your ears through the bones. And this chap is being able to walk along and is getting all those same kind of visual motion cues that you would think that are coming through sunglasses but coming straight into his ears because the audio is augmenting his reality. Think about the opportunity that that presents for those with disabilities, for example, or those that uh, you have limited sight. So the real uh, scary stuff is this. Um, who wants laser beams directed into their eyes? It's usually an advised. Um, but unfortunately, that's what's happening. Uh, this is the idea of retinal projection. This is where we're going. If you want to think about the actual future of this stuff, you know, basically doing anything where you have to hold a phone up in front of an you know, empty stage looks a bit stupid, and we all look a bit silly. And we all know that we all look a bit stupid and look a bit silly. But when these things go onto our faces and sooner or later into our eyeballs, well, then it looks less silly, although it is a bit more scary, to the point before the robots are coming and we're all going to be them. So this is retinal projection, projecting laser beams literally deflecting off a glass lens into your eyes so that you don't actually have anything on a screen, so to speak. It's just literally projected directly into your eyeballs. Does that feel nice? I feel kind of the warm and fuzzies in a literal way. Um, if you're worried, is this actually going to happen? Intel launched a product uh, earlier this year where they were certainly going to do it. Then they cancelled it because they realized it was really expensive. But there are other people actually making it. Here's another example of this coming into production. It's a Kickstarter project that's already live. And so we're seeing these things actually become from science, fi uh, science fiction into science fact. The, the idea that you're going to walk around with some smart glasses, which Apple have got a bunch of patents for already, on your face where you can literally get the time of day, your navigation, into your glasses, by the way, that none of this is actually, he's not seeing it on the glass, this is being projected literally into the eyeballs, that you will have this experience of being able to go throughout your day wearing glasses. If you, anyone into kind of stocks and shares and investing, should have gone to spec savers, you will do in the future. I'm pretty sure that you're going to want to invest in a bunch of optometrists right now. That's not an official piece of legal or financial advice. Um, but I would recommend it. So by North, you can go check out this, and you can go buy your own pair or sign up on Kickstarter. The point is, is that, okay, oh, come on, JP, get to the point. The cyborgs are coming, right? Well, you heard it from the start. Yes, they are. The irony is that you are the cyborg. And that was probably what you weren't expecting. We all have to get to this stage where we're going to have to understand what it means to live alongside the technology. The point is that if we want our augmented reality, if we want our reality to be augmented, well, it's coming closer and closer to us. We talk in kind of church about what the spirit is, about the idea of it coming closer than hands and feet, closer than breathing. Well, if you want spiritual augmentation, you go to the spirit. If you want technological augmentation, well, unfortunately, Robocop isn't necessarily that far away. That's me. <laughs>